Is it working? Okay, cool. Uh, so as Adam said, I had three days to prepare this, and I have spent the last two talking to furniture and my cat in my apartment trying to get this right. So I apologize if I miss something or just freeze up. Um, so yeah, and y'all should all recognize that's his face. Yeah. Uh, so DevOps, some of y'all may be familiar with this. This is the new buzzword. It's going to be the next like Web 2.0 and cloud that someone's going to use too much and we're all going to be sick of. Um, this is the Wikipedia definition, and I'm not going to read it for y'all, but uh, basically DevOps is the idea that developers and operations work together, and you know they they work on things as a team instead of one side of the house doing just dev and one side doing operations, you know, we work together and kind of, you know, make sure that the application goes through all the way to production. Um, at the College of Architecture, this wasn't really a big deal. Ben and I worked pretty well together before whatever. Um, so this book right here, if you haven't read it, is awesome. Everyone should read it and take it to their boss and everyone else, including non-IT people, and make them read it so then they can realize the hardships that all of us in IT have. Um, and this kind of gives you a feel for what DevOps is and like where it came from. Um, and then I added these. This is before DevOps. You, know, you got the developer there and then the operations trying to put out the fire. <laughs> oh, what? It didn't work on your, uh, yeah. And this is after DevOps. We're all happy and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, life before configuration management with us. Um, configuration changes were tedious for our sites. Everything's in build out. We do run Python, so we, Python. Um, all of our sites were build out, and all of the site specific things like the Nginx configs, the UWSGI configs, and the supervisor stuff was all done in each little site. That's a pain in the ass if you need to go change something, especially since every one of our sites was pretty much identical. So that's what, 15 repositories. You have to go in and change all these files. Kind of a pain in the ass. Um, systems require a lot of manual configuration. We couldn't you know, go and spin up these machines. And you know, it, it took a while. You could go put the packages in place, you know, install whatever we need, and then get configuration files hand edited. So it takes a lot of time, especially when you need to start scaling. Um, <clears throat> most of our systems were not highly available. In fact, I think we had just the one that was highly available. Um, again, it takes time. If you have to continuously go in and, I mean, no one wants to go do the same thing three or four times by hand. It's, it's, why would I want to do that? Um, we had no documentation about our systems at all. So if Ben had left, we would have been fucked. Uh, yeah. And, and that, that's caused a problem because, you know, on top of the fact that we have to configure all of this stuff by hand, we didn't know how. We had one person who knew how the systems worked and how everything worked, and that was it. If he left, yeah, hopefully nothing goes down. Um, and that leads us to no confidence in DR. Um, you know, you have to be able to reconfigure systems, even if you're doing snapshots and you're cloning VMs and stuff like that. It's still something that, you know, what happens if you lose those? You still have to be able to rebuild these systems some way. Uh, disaster recovery. Sorry. Uh, and I realize I'm talking very fast. Turns out this is kind of nervous. Um, so reduce time between ticket production. Uh, sorry. These are our goals. And I'm not going to lie to you. We didn't sit in a room and decide this is what we need to do. I kind of just go out and find things like a dog, and then I just start doing them. So <laughs> this was the end result, but I'm going to pretend like we had these goals to begin with. Um, so reduce time between tickets to production. Um, I don't know how often we did deploys back then, because that was like six months ago. Um, but it wasn't every day, and it took a lot of time to go from, you know, someone makes a feature request or someone has a bug to actually pushing that to production, because it's got to go through devs test it, then it goes to staging, then finally it goes to production. It takes a lot of time. And if you don't have that automated, it takes even more time. Uh, eliminating repetitive tasks, adding users to systems, removing users from systems, um, adding SSH keys, all that stupid shit you have to do every day. I don't want to keep doing it. And yes, you can config some of this stuff out, but you know. Uh, manage a growing number of services with less effort. That's kind of the same thing, 
again, I have three days. Uh, so, you know, we have customers that come in and say, hey, I want this service and I want this service. And, and then we have to go build those servers and that's a pain. And documents and DR. Um, so we had no documentation. We needed something there to, you know, show this is how the system is made, this is how it's built out. And uh, yeah, make the DR more efficient, whatever. Uh, so, Chef uh, and configuration manage in general. Um, before the days of configuration management, people you know scripted everything out in Bash or Python or whatever. You know this is how the system goes. But then you start having multiple systems. Maybe there are similarities, but you know there are differences too. And so you have to rewrite code lots. And this is where configuration management kind of comes into play, where you know you reuse a lot of the same code, and it's a nice framework that makes it easy to do. Chef, uh, and we started with Puppet. I don't know if any of y'all have any uh, have ever done Puppet. It sucks. Don't don't even bother. It uh, awful. Oh god, awful. Um, <laughs> so we did Puppet for about two months before I just like shit because it was throwing security issues or I don't remember what it did but there were, there were not happy sounds coming from my office and uh, and so we decided to start looking at chef um, some of the things puppet just got so so wrong chef got right chef is just programming it's it uses Ruby they don't try and write some funky DSL that then people regret later it's just Ruby um, it scales out very well because on the Chef server, all of these uh, recipes and everything get compiled on each node as opposed to the server compiling it and then sending it all out. Um, so the core components that I'll talk about today are cookbooks. Cookbooks are generally a service like Nginx or uh, Apache or HAProxy. And they have different recipes. So you can, you can do different things like uh, you know, maybe Nginx with mod something. Um, so you have different recipes and you have uh, inside these cookbooks. It's hot in here. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Um, yeah, I'm just going to move on. Um, so this is my documentation now. This is a recipe, and this is actually the recipe that installs or deploys all of our web app sites. Uh, as y'all can see, it's pretty straightforward. It's all Ruby code. It's all very readable. Anyone, even if they don't know Ruby, could, could go through and read this pretty well. Um, it's basically, in this one, we're including a few packages and other recipes. We're building out uh, some directories and setting their owners and permissions. We throw a default.cfg file in there that comes directly from the cookbook. And then we have some attributes. Uh, so we have a, a hash key value pair of sites with maybe some of the sites have you know, special configuration options. And so we're iterating through those, and each site we're deploying the site. Um, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's, it really it didn't take long to do. I think it took us like five days to get the first, first cookbook out. But this is now my documentation. So if you ever ask, uh, we need some documentation, it's right there. It just so happens this documentation can also build out the server without my intervention. Um, so oh yeah, uh, from OS install to production, I can put up a new web app in 36 minutes without ever touching it. It's kind of cool. Um, so the developers also use Chef. Uh, any y'all y'all know what Vagrant is? Pretty popular now. Okay. Um, they use Vagrant. Vagrant comes uh, by default. You can use Chef. You can use Puppet. I, I don't know what else you can do. Bash scripts, whatever. And Vagrant is basically allows you to script out a, uh, a VM. So, I mean, you kind of build it up. And so what our devs do is all of their stuff is done in Vagrant. They, they develop the sites in Vagrant and they use our cookbooks. So the same cookbooks that are being done for production and for staging, that's, you know, it ensures environment sanity and with the exception of maybe an NFS mount here or there, it's the same exact system. So if it works in dev, it's going to work in production. 
Um, and, and so some of the other things, so this is actually the key values pair for uh, all of our sites, as you can see. I can't count. Um, and so we have different attributes, and these, these actions right here, uh, one of the things they wanted was every time they built out their Vagrant box, they didn't want to have to rebuild every site, because that takes a lot of time, especially if you're only working on my account or payments.arch. They don't want to build out all of them, because it takes like 30 minutes, 45 minutes to check out the code, build everything out, and it's, it's a pain. So we gave them the ability to basically say disable, enable, or check out the sites, and this makes it a lot faster for them. Um, that was just a feature we added recently was the checkout, and you know they seem to like it. If you want a dev perspective or a Python person, go talk to Ben. Ow. So these are the results. Uh, we went from it's like a deploy a week or something to this was last Friday. We had four deploys in the morning, no problem. Uh, John's our developer. He's telling everyone in HipChat. We have no issue. I don't think we've ever had an issue where a deploy went bad or anything like that. And this is all automated. I mean, this is basically they push to whatever uh, Git branch, staging, production, and Chef takes over, pulls it all down, rebuilds the site, done. Do this all live, no, no issue. Um, and I don't know if you remember the dog before. So we now have like multiple deploys. It's very clever, I know. Um, <sighs> Yeah, so I probably went through that in like 15 minutes, right? <laughs> <laughs> 15 yeah, so, uh, yeah, and yeah, him again. This is the reason I'm up here wasting y'all's time. Um, we are hiring for a senior dev, so if you want to come work with us, we're awesome. Just, just let you know. Um, and those, that's my contact information, so I'm going to take questions now. Yeah. Anyone questions? You want me to go over something again, or? Uh, I don't like the DSL. Like the their bastardized JSON crap is really irritating, and the fact that they don't do things like I mean, when you write code, you expect it to execute in a certain order. Puppet doesn't do that. They have each of their resources. It compiles and does some magic foo. And so if you put package here and template here, it may end up that the template goes first, and it's. Just really pain in the ass. So uh, managing their servers also was kind of a pain. They're, the way they do environments is basically it's a different directory. So you have a lot of duplicate uh, modules and stuff like that per environment. It's awful. So yeah. any other questions, comments? You could probably make the next talk. How many Uh, on average, what, like two or three deployments? As fast as our devs can get the code out there, is that's how fast our deployments go. And we can rebuild servers, and we have on the fly. Like I said, 36 minutes is the longest, and that's the web app server. We have memcache servers, Beanstalk, um, other services that aren't Python related. We can build out all of these systems. And in fact, we've been talking about our DR plan. If everything goes south, we're just gonna take our cookbooks and our data and go put it in Amazon and run it for two weeks or however long we need to. So when you say build out in 36 minutes, you mean from a bare VM with no operating yeah, system? Yeah, yeah. So there's no operating system at start. It goes through, does a pixie boot for Ubuntu, installs the OS, OS hands off to Chef. Chef says OK, and it builds out the system. And on top of that, recently, we actually have it now where not only will it build out the system, but Chef does some things, and we now have it being monitored. So to read between the lines, your pixie boot is booting a No, oh. it's just, uh, it's Ubuntu, are you familiar with seed files? Or uh, every distro has it, but uh, it's basically a way to script out the install a little bit. So I mean it goes through and actually does the install of Ubuntu, and at the end there's a little pre-seed thing that drops a startup script in. So that startup script is actually, it sets the time because Chef likes the time, and then it goes and talks to Chef, and Chef takes over. So, yeah. What? You've got a machine that just booted. Yeah. There's no chef on the machine. You've got an initial script, but there's no chef on the machine. Right, okay, part of that initial script is it goes and downloads and installs chef. Like the Ubuntu package? Yeah, yeah, it's just a. Uh, 
Yeah, and uh, another thing, if you're worried about uh, sane systems, uh, Chef is all, it's all embedded, so it's all its own thing. If you do happen to run Ruby stuff, I know that's crazy, right? Um, if you do happen to run that, Chef won't interfere. It uses its own libraries and its own little directory. It's all embedded, so. Uh, we're using 11.4. We haven't upgraded to 11.6 yet. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Yeah, can you uh, say that a little louder? Have you heard of a thing called Pushy? No, I haven't. So it's a brand new thing that they just uh, rolled out with about server, chef servers, and you can buy it for 10,000. It's like literally eight half an hour ride mm -hmm. for next uh, web site. You can hardly even get a good network out. So that's cool. Okay, and that's their, uh, that, uh, that uses zero MQ? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, that's their uh, paid version. We use the open source version, so yeah. Any other questions? I'm telling you that talks over there, it sounds good. <laughs> <laughs>